In this video lecture, I am going to discuss about the Mohr diagram. also known as Mohr circle. The Mohr diagram or the Mohr circle was at first introduced by a German engineer Otto Mohr in 19th century. Look, take a look to this block. Suppose this is a block of rock in which I am applying some amount of stress and because of applying stress a fault plane or a fracture plane generated which I have shown with the help of this plane which is in red color okay and to the stress that I am applying to this rock of blo uh, this block of rock I can resolve that uh, that stress into principal stress axis like sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 sigma 1 is the maximum principal stress axis sigma 2 is the intermediate principal stress axis sigma 3 is the uh, lowest principal stress axis and these three principal stress axis are mutually perpendicular to each other and we of course know the value of the sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 because these are the principal stress axis that are applying on a block that are, that is given here and because of that stress a fault plane or fracture plane is generated now we can we can uh, we can see that at this fault plane or the fracture plane at a particular point there there must be a normal stress applying on that point of this plane this fracture plane or fault plane and there is a shear stress applying at that point of this fault plane or the fracture plane but we don't know the value of sigma m and sigma s although we know the orientation of this fault plane or the fracture plane with respect to sigma 3 in this case although you can also take the orientation with respect to the maximum principal stress that is sigma 1 that is up to you and we can actually uh, this engineer the auto Mohr, actually give the representation of the different planes different fracture planes uh, all the possible fracture planes in a block and what was this what was the amount of sigma and the normal stress and sigma as the shear stress applying uh, at a point of a particular uh, orientation okay so this representation is called Mohr circle or Mohr diagram in which the x-axis is Sigma n the normal stress and y-axis is shear stress or Sigma s and sometimes it is regarded as tau And this is the Mohr circle. You can see here this point on the x axis is sigma 1. And this point in the x axis or the sigma n axis is sigma 3. Sigma 1 is, of course, the maximum principal stress axis, and this is 0, 0 coordinate, so it should be farther away as compared to the sigma 3, the minimum principal stress axis and this is 2 theta as we know that theta is the orientation of this fault plane or the fracture plane with respect to the sigma 3 the minimum principal stress axis so here the minimum principal stress axis is sigma 3 and the orientation of the fracture plane or the fault plane is 2 theta uh, with uh, if we take the angle from this sigma 3 how it comes to the 2 theta? I will discuss this in the next video. But before that, I am going to discuss few more things about this Mohr diagram. In this Mohr diagram, 
if you are using the Mohr diagram, the Mohr circle for the geological purpose, we take the positive side of sigma n or the x axis as compressional side while the negative side of the x axis or the sigma 1 or sigma n axis as tension. But this convention actually flips or I can say that the positive side becomes tension side and the negative side becomes compressive side in civil engineer and other engineering literature but it is not the case with the geology why because in the geology the major kind of stress that we have to deal is compressional stress not the tension so that's why uh, we take the positive side as compressional side and we uh, uh, as we have to deal more with the compression So the Mohr circle describes the normal and the shear stress acting on a planes of all possible orientation through a point in the rock. Okay, now comes to differential stress. What is differential stress? The differential stress in a simple main, uh, in the simple language is the difference between the maximum and the minimum principal stress value. So the difference uh, the, the, the differential stress in this case will be sigma 1 that is this value minus sigma 3 that means this value okay so this value minus this value gives you this value okay so this is called differential stress and th that is equal to the diameter of Mohr circle the diameter of Mohr circle is of great importance because it is the thing that is very substantial when we have to deal with the mechanics of the rock body or how resistant or how or uh, sorry the how much the stress is being applied on a uh, rock body or a rock mass okay so this is clearly seen with the help of diameter uh, with the diameter of the Mohr circle and in the next video i am going to discuss about the derivation of the equation of the Mohr circle how uh, how we can derive this uh, Mohr circle the mathematical representation of the Mohr circle and then after the use of this Mohr uh, diagram Mohr circle with some examples. Thank you.